Okay guys, Saturday the 10th of February, so let's have a look at the US indexes. So we'll start on the S&P 500 as always, and then we'll move on to the NASDAQ. Okay, so for the S&P from last week, what we're looking at, we've been going over how when the market breaks down below this very, very steep trend line, it's likely we're going to see a violent correction coming into the market. Now, on the 2nd of February, we had the very, very strong move down. And then coming into last week, what we went over was how we had minor support and minor support, but really moving forward, I expected the market to come down at least toward this 2,700 level. Um, now, I didn't expect it to come down quite so violently um, like it did. I actually believe the US markets, they had the, the largest drop in terms of points in their history. Uh, so very, very strong selling pressure coming into all of those markets. We didn't actually find support until we got all the way down toward 2,530. So coming into this week, what are we looking at? Well, the first thing is on this market, although we have started to find some support down here, um, the market is still looking bearish until we get up above at least this 2700 level once again. We really need to see the market breaking up above this area, holding up above this area, before I'd be happy to then look for those pullbacks to 2700 to really 2685 before I would then start to be happy to look for longer term and stronger bullish corrections um, back up toward those 2735 to 2740 levels. Um, now down below, we have a few different levels. So first of all, coming into next week, if we see the market pressing up, we've actually already done it on the Thursday, this remains key resistance. If you see the market pressing up here, it's worthwhile looking for those potential bearish setups. Now down below there, we have really 2670, um, all the way down toward, and this is a little bit lower, 2660, right here. Again, another level of strong resistance. We have another one just down below there um, toward 2650. Really, it comes all the way down toward 2635. All of these levels are strong areas of potential resistance. If we see the market pressing up once again next week, I'm happy to look for potential sales, potential sales, potential sales. And then really, as I've mentioned, it's only if we start to get above this level and I would then be looking at the market turning more um, medium to longer term bullish once again. And I'd then be looking for the moves back up toward this previous area of structure. And really, um, I'd be expecting the market to come back up toward this 2780 level at a minimum. Now down below, let's have a look if we just zoom out. First thing we can see is last time the market was creating strong levels of support and resistance. Um, what you could almost call... I hate to use the word normal when you're looking at a market, but more regular price action movements where the market is still pressing higher, but it's uh, the sellers are stepping in, the profit takers are stepping in. We're creating solid levels of structure. It's all the way back down toward this um, 2,500 level right here. So very, very strong support starts down toward that area. However, up above, we still have levels which are worth watching. So let's have a look. We can see the markets have spiked down twice now toward 2530. So first of all, we want to take that into account. You know, we've created two levels of support here. It's obviously an area now worthwhile looking for those potential bullish positions. But really, um, in all honesty, I'd rather have a little bit more um, evidence in terms of recent structure. For me, I prefer the levels at, let's have a look, 2605 down to 2590, right here. Down below there we have another level at around about 2585 down into really 2573 right here. And then we have another one down here at 2565 down toward, it's a little bit lower, 2554 right here. Um, so for me, I've also got a little minor, well, I would say more minor level sitting at 2545 to 2540. Um, now we are spanning a fair distance for the S&P 500, but because the market has been so volatile, we need to look at more areas of support and resistance. I mean, usually with the S&P, even if we take a large day like this one here, 
it's 32 point move, the high to the low of the day. If we then just look at the 2nd of February, it's 73. So it's over double. And then if we start to come to last week, 166. So over five times the regular movements on the S&P. So obviously the first thing to say is you want to be more cautious with your trading. You know, the market is obviously spiking around a lot more than normal. Um, first and foremost, protect your capital as a trader. It's really, it's the most important thing you can do. Um, when I'm looking to trade, my question is always, before I get into the trade, am I willing to take a full position loss for this entry? It's never, I can make some money off of this entry. It's always, am I willing to suffer a full position loss? Because really, I have no idea which trades are going to win and which trades are going to lose. So I want to make sure before I get in, I'm completely happy with the setup. So if it does lose, I don't blame myself on something like, you know, I got into this trade because of, um, I thought it was going to go higher. I didn't want to miss out. Or I got into this trade because I was a bit annoyed I lost my last trade and I wanted to make the money back. And I always make it absolutely certain and if I get into the trade and it's a loss, I can say, okay, it's absolutely fine. I'm more than happy to take that loss because it lined up with everything I was looking for. So coming into next week, quick recap. The main thing to say is this market is still bearish. That levels up above one, two, and three are very key resistance now for the S&P. 2635, 2650, uh, 2660, 2672, 2685, 2700 more than happy to look for um, potential weakness at any of these areas and it's only if we start breaking up above this 2700 level i would then be looking at the s p as longer term bullish once again i'd be happy to then look for stronger moves um, up down below we have those levels of potential support at structure 2600 to 2590 um, 2583 2573 maybe a little bit lower 2565 down to 2555. Now, really, for me, these are the main areas I'd be happy to look for buy positions one, two, and three. Down below, these two, they're a little bit more minor for me. They have shown two very strong reactions now. Um, there's not a lot of price action evidence um, to back it up for me. So, this, this, and this area are the levels I'd rather look for the potential buy positions. If we start failing, at this level now, certainly because we've made two tests almost at exactly the same area. If the market starts coming down through this level now, it's a very good area to then look for resistance and stronger moves down at least toward really 2510 to 2500, which would then become the next uh, level of support. So only if we start breaking down below those levels at present, a little bit more neutral on this market. Um, it has been very, very bearish. So coming into this week, I'm only really looking at these buy areas down below. Up above is the preference, um, key resistance, looking for those sell positions until or if we start to break up above this level, where I then start to look for the moves higher. Okay, guys, let's now move on to the NASDAQ. Okay, guys, now let's do the exact same thing for the NASDAQ. So let's have a look at this market from last week quickly. Uh, what we were going over, what we have been going over, was this sloping support line right here um, and how if we started to break down below, the market would then become more bearish. Now, we had the potential, small head and shoulders here. We then had that very strong move down on Friday. So coming into last week, what we went over was how we could look for further weakness on this market unless we started to break up above the 6840 to 6815 level. If we started to break up above here, the market was once again starting to look more um, bullish. What we could also look for was potential holding at this level right here of sloping support and resistance. If we started to break down below this level, which we would get our clue from the market breaking down below this level of support right here, our 686660 to 6640, um, we would then expect the move down at least toward this 6500 to 6530 level right here. Now the market um, didn't give us any holding, it just crashed straight through, it came straight through to this level and then it came all the way down to uh, really 6160, testing basically at the ME200 before the bulls have once again set back into the market. Okay, so coming into next week, what are we now looking at? Well, the first thing to say is, again, with this market, an absolutely enormous move down. When we have analysis like this, we're looking for the bearish move down to at least the sloping support. We're then looking for, if we start to break down below, we're looking for that move down towards 6500. Um, you know, normally with longer term analysis like that, it can take days, um, sometimes it can take weeks. 
you know, you're not expecting it to come down like this. We have been going over how, more so with the S&P, how we had had such a strong move up that when the correction came, it was likely going to be very violent. But um, with this market, if we just have a quick measure, we can actually see that it came off, you know, round about 900 points, which is an absolutely enormous amount as I've already mentioned, uh, with the US indexes in terms of points, not in terms of percentage, but in terms of points, uh, the markets had their, their strongest moves down in one day. I believe it was in history. So absolutely enormous um, bearish correction coming into all of the US markets. I also bled over into other indexes. Uh, the FTSE was massively down also. Um, okay, so coming into next week now. The first thing is this market is still bearish also. Really until we start to break up above at least this sloping, what is now potentially resistance, we can actually see we've already tested it on the 7th of February, rejected and then crashed all the way back down once again. So longer term bullish, again, 6.840 to 6.815. If the market starts to break above here, I'd then be happy to look for stronger bounces. Now, really we have resistance up above at 6.880 towards 6.920, but I would then expect the market to at least attempt to uh, continue with its bullish rally. Um, until that point, certainly, we have resistance, 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 and resistance. Um, 6,790 to 6,770, 6,742 to 6,713, 6,700 to 6,675, 6,660 to 6,640. Now, the way I'm looking at it is, if we see the market pressing back up, uh, very good resistance levels 1, 2, and 3. If we start to break up of this one, I'm really at around about the 6740, although that will be adjusted depending on what day we're on. If we're breaking up above this level and it is also lining up with that sloping support and resistance, I'd then be happy to look for potential bounces. Um, really only up into whatever zone is sitting up above. Um, really, as I've mentioned, for it to turn more bullish, it would really need to start getting back up above this level. Now, with the NASDAQ, it is a little bit different also. We have this 6530 to 6500 level. This is key resistance first of all market is pressing back up towards that level if we reach it it's worthwhile once again looking for that weakness however if we start to break up above this level it's also a very good area to then start looking for stronger and um, bullish momentum and a move back up toward really at least six the round number six thousand six hundred really these levels right here if we start breaking up above this level at present it is still key resistance and worthwhile watching for weakness once again now if we scroll out we can see we do have quite a lot of structure here the market tested at that 6165 area but for me that's testing at the ma200 it's where it found support and then rockets it higher um, in terms of price action support let's have a look we've got a level at 6220 up toward 6260 right here we also have a level up above there at around about 6320 all the way up toward uh, really it's a little bit further 6350 right here for me these are the main levels of support one here and one here. If the market is coming back down, it is still worthwhile watching for the market holding at these levels. However, if we start coming back down below here once again, really I'd then expect the market to come down toward uh, 6130 at a minimum. Uh, basically testing at this previous level of structure right here. The reason we're using structure or the reason we use structure is it's just areas that we can see where both buyers and sellers have been interested in the market. Um, if these are key price levels, where buyers and sellers were fighting over the market, it makes sense that if the market returns to these levels, once again, buyers and sellers will be interested. So let's say the sellers are coming down toward this level. They can see that the market previously held at this level, but then it broke up. So what they're thinking is, okay, market's selling down. Um, but last time the market reached here, the buyers stepped in and pressed the market higher. So sellers want to get out of their positions at these levels because it's a sensible level. Buyers also look, okay, last time the market was here, it broke out and pressed higher. This becomes a good area to look for, once again, um, value to buy into the market. It's a relatively simple concept when you look at it. Um, when you, you, know, you can get people trying to make trading a lot more difficult technically than actually trading is difficult in terms of doing it day to day. But technically, when you're reading markets and stuff, it doesn't need to be indicator laden. 
you don't need to start thinking about all these crazy concepts. It's basically just looking where buyers are willing to step into the market, where buyers are looking to get out of the market, um, where the buyers are gonna be more powerful and where the sellers are gonna be more powerful. That's pretty much what we do. Uh, 6430 down toward 6400, the round number once again. You can see these round numbers are used very, very often. Up above there, we have another level at around about 6450. Up toward really 6465. So quite a few levels to go over. And the reason for that is because, you know, the markets have made enormous moves. So we're having to look at a, a very large portion of the um, chart. You know, with the NASDAQ, even a very strong move right here, 100 points on the day. If we come into last week, 420 points. So, you know, four times what it normally does. So let's have a quick recap. Let me get rid of some of this so we can see it a little bit easier. Basically, if the market is pressing up, um, this is key resistance at 6530 to 6500 for looking for weakness once again. If we break up above, it's worthwhile looking for stronger bullish bounces, at least up to that round number at 6600. Key resistance levels, uh, 6640, 6660, 6675, 6700, 6715, 6740, really 45. Resistance, resistance, resistance for then looking for the bears to step back in once again. It's only if we really start breaking above this level, which is, would, or whatever is lining up with that sloping support and resistance, uh, which could potentially be 6770 to 6790, I'd then start to look for um, buy positions. I'd be a little bit more cautious Key resistance, 6815, 6840. If we start breaking above this level, again, I'd be happy to look for stronger bullish moves up at least towards 6880 um, and potentially up towards 6920. Down below, we have key support at 6220 to 6262, right here. Uh, 6320 to 6350, again, a uh, very good level of support for looking for potential bullish positions once again. If we start to break down below this level, I'd then expect a stronger move down to retest at structure. And where we are at present, we have resistance 6405, 6430, 6445, 6465. Right here and right here. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's only really if we start breaking above here that would then start to look for those bullish positions. And I'd be looking for resistance here, resistance here. And then if we get back down to these levels, I'd be happy to look for bullish positions, bullish positions. We can actually move this one down a little bit. So 6350. Down to our runout 6295 right here. And we're using the close and the open price of Thursday and Friday to give us a little bit more evidence just for adjusting that zone ever so slightly. Key support down below if we're breaking down below. Looking for that stronger movement. Okay, guys, that is everything for the US markets this week.